Hi, today I want to show you how to properly add an app inside of your WIST project. So, you know, let's get right started. Um, we want to go to the app panel. It will say My Apps. It's the one right on the top. And we're going to go to the plus. And then in here, I can give my application a name. So most of the times when we go into web development, actually we're using custom-made APIs. So when you think of Zapier or Make, you know, okay, there are pre-built APIs. There is OpenAI, there is Google Docs, there is Google Sheets, there is Airtable, you know, those are pre-made APIs. But most of the times in development, we're going to build custom APIs because APIs are not just services like Google or OpenAI that provide a service to you. APIs are the way that your backend can communicate with the front end and can process certain data and logic. For example, if you're using Xano, the best no-code backend in the world, you can actually build custom APIs in here, right? Which is a pretty neat feature. And I just have a folder here called example, which is, um, which will contain this API, cool API, and it will just create a variable and return that variable, right? So this is a custom API. So this is important because this is why WIST allows me to add names in here. Let's call this custom API. Uh, Xano, so that I know, oh, this is the one I have connected with Xano. So now you see, why do, don't we have Xano in here? I can connect Xano. This is actually why WIST has REST, because instead of listing a million different options that are all based on RESTful API technology, um, WIST is saying, you know, let's just say REST and they can connect a million different APIs and all their custom APIs with us. If you Google RESTful API, um, you'll get more information on that. But let's show a diagram here I did in the last video, which is a good one. So if you look at the RESTful API, what is a REST API? A REST API is an application uh, communication protocol, if you want to call it that way. It is basically you know, the way that your website will communicate with the web server that will communicate with your database. It is like a Zapier webhook a little bit, if you want a simplified version of it. It's like a way Zapier webhook that is the address that processes, that, that, that connects with the server that will process the data and then give you a result. Since 90% of all services and all of your custom built APIs are using RESTful API technology. WIST is saying, you know, let's just not list everything. Let's just call this REST. And this is what they're doing right in here. So let's, let's configure this in this example with our custom API. But the same principle applies to every API. Now, what I see a lot of people do, they just write return, as you should always. You always need to do return quotes because if you wouldn't, you would not be returning that because when we move from embed one to embed two, you'll get an undefined because they actually don't have a, you know, text configurator. They now have a real function editor. So you are using JavaScript here um, to return this value. So this is JavaScript, welcome to code. <laughs> and you would get that API here. Now it will, s it will say base URL. Right, and if I then would later on go to configure, let's say URL um, endpoint URL or something like this. Now, what is important to 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 note here is that this is your whole URL, not your base URL. And now let me go to FigJam and explain what I'm talking about here. So when we have this API, and feel free to call this API. <laughs> um, I have my API in here. Right, and the blue part, that is what I would call the base URL. This is what we are configuring in here, right? Then 
um, also besides the base URL, we have the group. I would call this the group. Some APIs have it, some don't have it. This really depends. On ChatGPT, for example, this would be V1, V2, you know, depending on which branch you're using. So you have the base URL, this is the whole API. Ideally, you want to set it up that way that your base URL will be able to be so universally set that you can have all their different API groups connected to this base URL. So think of it like this. If you're going to use your own custom API now built in Xano, what you could do if you know, there are two ways to do that actually. You could say, you know, I only have one API group in my Xano account. I only have this folder and I will put all my APIs in this folder. Then I would say, let's, you know, let me show you that visually too. Where did Figma go? Okay, let's take the base URL and API group and make this our base URL and then just add the paths in a later section so that we always call this group and we have that preset in WIS and then once we have that group we can go into the request and access you know the individual branches the individual items in the group so if you have it like this I would cut out the the path which is basically where it goes because think of it like this in folders I have cool API I could add another one those are the paths if I have this base URL and the group which is this one I will be able in WIS to call all APIs that are in this group, right, in the request section, which is the ideal example because you don't want to have like one app to call everything if you're working with Xano, but maybe you want to do that if you're working with an external API because, you know, there is less branching. But this is high level we're talking about here. Let's continue with this example and then I'll be also going back and showing you another alternative. So we have the base URL and the group. This can be V1, V2. If it doesn't exist there, just only have this base URL part. Here you go. We're returning that. Now I want to go under the app section on requests and I want to create a request. Let's call this cool request. Here you go. And let's, we, we see we have our app in here saying custom API Xano. And now it says URL endpoint. And now we're like, what, like, should we do the whole thing again in here? And I've seen a lot of people just like add, oh, the whole endpoint again. But you don't want to add the whole endpoint again. Because WIST already, s you already saved the whole endpoint in here, right? and you are calling this endpoint in here. So you only need to extend this endpoint, right? Think of it like this. Let's give you like a little visual of what WIST is doing here. Let's hope I'm not breaking anything. Um, but basically, think of it like this. If I would go to inspect elements and we're going hacky here where it says custom API Xano. This is basically what's happening, right? This is your base URL here, and you are extending. This is what you set in here. This would be your base URL here. And you are extending this with, you have the group in here, and you're extending this by slash cool API. So you only need to add, you know, your, your path for that. But, you know, let's uh, maybe refresh that to not break anything that I didn't waste, but this is what I'm trying to uh, illustrate here because I think sometimes it's easier to do those things visually. So now we got that configured. Now if we go to our endpoint, they're going to give us documentation. This is a get. We see in Xano it says get. OpenAI or other APIs will, will tell you what to do. We're going to do a get here. Now, you can add parameters in there as well. I'll be going into that a little bit later. But now if I run this, you see that I have successfully connected that and I have got the, you know, the data back uh, 87. And now I could go, for example, in one of those items in here and instead of 
setting a hard-coded value, I can go to my data that I'm getting, which is 87, and this will show 87. So the moment this page loads, this will be 0, and the moment I process this request, it will move to 87, right? So this is how you can get dynamic data set in WIST. Now think of it like this, maybe, and now here we're going to go into the more complex examples. Maybe I want to receive an integer. Let's call this number, right? I want to send a number, and I want to actually have my number uh, plus 87, for example, right? So I'm going to return 1, and I'll be having 88, because it will add plus 87. So this is something you would do on the back end. We should be getting 88. Look at that. So if I publish that, I now have a parameter in my URL. And let me explain to you again how this would work. If I were to run this, I could copy the curl, and I could go to Figma. Let's go in here, and let's add a new text item. So if you would look into that, we will see that this is the request. And actually, I hope that Xena would give me the parameters, but they don't. <laughs> so uh, bad example here. <laughs> but basically, we have a parameter here. Now, since this is a get call, right, we will have URL parameters. If this would be a post, which it will not work as a post, it will say, you, what are you trying to do here? You know, this needs to be a get because the documentation says get. But we will get the URL parameters. So the cool thing with the URL parameters is I can add number in here. And let's just hard code this for now. Let's add 100, right? And now if I were to run this, you will see that I'm passing on the data that is happening on WIST to the API, and I'm getting the accumulated data again. And of course, that only goes until. So maybe let's do 5 to illustrate that better. And let's run this, and you will see that it will do the math on my back end, right? So this is how we can add data in the get. Now, actually, you know, I don't have an authentication table. So, but just so that you know, you can also add headers. So you could, you could add a header of authorization in here, which could be, for example, return uh, bearer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right, like this, and I could pass an authorization header. This will not do anything, because I don't have any authorization enabled. But if I were to have my, um, you know, my API authenticated, so let's do uh, get, oh, how do they call this, uh, header? Oh, no, you can only set. So it would probably be like, and Ray, please don't <laughs> laugh at me trying to do this here. But I would assume this would be get all input if I want to authenticate that. There are probably better ways of doing that. But maybe not. So if I were to call this API, I would set the header. And if I would now to go to my request history right here, uh, I would go to my request header. I will see this comes from WIST, right? And am I passing on any authorization? Let's see. Maybe it's an old request. Yes, I pass on authorization. So what I could do in here, if I would add a stop and debug so I can see the data for X2, which is uh, getting all the data, also accessing the headers. And this is not how you should build it. This is just, an, just a little prep I'm doing live here off script to uh, illustrate how authentication could work if you're going to work with that on a back end, right? We're doing the stop and debug here. So now I can look into my back end, right? And I will see that the request header is passing on my uh, authentication token, right? You can see I'm setting this token here in the header in WIST, and I can pass this on to my API. Now, you will probably not have to worry about that, because uh, the API that you're using probably has it already pre-made. But in case not, 
uh, this is what you should maybe look into. So the output I'm getting here uh, in the stop and debug, oh, I can't access that. I need to output that actually. So I need to output x2. Uh, please don't follow this along. This is me just prepping for the next step of this video. Um, so if I were to call this again, like this, I should be getting the webhook data in here. So if I go to output, uh, yes, you see I have that data, but I'm just getting a number. So maybe I'm not that great in figuring out how to do authentication in uh, Xano. Let's do API key. Okay, you know, uh, <laughs> probably payload, hmm, interesting, but, you know, we don't need to, this is not a Xano tutorial, and this is exactly the reason why I don't do Xano tutorials, <laughs> but, you know, what I just want to illustrate here is, if I set, let's change this number, this ID to hello YouTube, right, and I would pass this on in the authorization and what did what happened here uh, number five get maybe it shouldn't be caps you know if I update that number and uh, pass this on again oh and also update my endpoint because x2 doesn't exist like this Again, please don't take this as an example how to build your API. This is just to, to illustrate it for the technical people. You see, if I were to call this right now with this updated number in Xano, if I go to my request history after the two hours we had, you know, you will see that in the request headers, I can set the data in the header. You know, you will see that, where did this go? The updated ID is here. This is probably not something you need to know, but it is good to know that this is how it works. You can access that in here. Your API, if you use OpenAI, will already, you know, they already have this in place in order to build you. Uh, but, you know, just so that you are aware, and then you will see the input in here. So the params that you set, the URL parameters, the five, will be the input of your API. Now, you could do this as a post, too. So let's change this to a post. Get and post are probably the only APIs that you'll ever need. So if I now run this again, we'll see hey, it won't work because we cannot do a get if it's a post. So we need to change this to a post. And if we would run this again, it will work too because we can set this information as URL parameters in a post too and it will work. But you could also do this in the body. So I can go to the body and add number, and I can write return 5. And before I'm going to do that, let's just look into the API and see how we received that, right? That is always interesting. So you see the input was 5, and we got the headers in here. Perfect. So now if I'm going to remove that URL parameter, because if we go with the post, we can send the body, and this is where we can send more legitimate data. It will work too, and I would recommend you that if you use post, to use the body. Now, if you use Stripe, you will have to work with URL parameters in the post sometimes for some of their APIs, but I made videos on that as well. But generally, you will send that data in the body, because this is where you can also send files. You can also set files in the body, and, uh, you know, that is a super neat thing. So, yeah, here you go. That works. And this is, I think, everything you need to know, basically, about creating um, co or connecting applications to your WIST project. And also, maybe a little bit geeky stuff on the back end, how that all works together, which, you know, you can never have enough of that. Because... I think it's one thing 
knowing how to work within a tool. But knowing how that tool actually works is a big advantage to you because then when you ever need to go in there and troubleshoot something, you know Xano is PHP, you know Wist is vanilla JavaScript with a touch of Vue.js, and you can ask ChatGPT, how do I fix this and in, in this? Because ChatGPT probably doesn't know Wist, probably doesn't know Xano, probably doesn't know any of those smaller tools that are not Zapier out there. And you know, if you ask more broader questions, how do I make an HTTP request in my browser? You know, this is how you can do that. Also, before I end this video, I want to add one more touch to this video. Let's say we pass on this authentication token. And this is, if you're not concerned about security, uh, you don't need to watch this. But if you want to be secure and if you want to do your request securely in WIST, uh, listen up. So if we go to the network tab here, I can, you know, ex I would expose my API key if I do this request in WIST like this. So if I do this request here, you will see this went to my API. And if I scroll down here to authorization, you see that I can expose my API key here, right? so the user can see my API key and then call my API, which we don't want, especially not if we're using ChatGPT. We'll look at the invoice and it says 5,000. So in order to go around that, you can use a feature called WIST secret, or ideally don't even call important APIs. But in case you have to, and you don't want to process that server side on something like Xano, which is highly recommend it, WIST gives you the feature to run this request on their Cloudflare account. So you can do, you can add a WIST secret. Let's call this uh, Xano Cool. And you know, I can add my uh, header. Let's add a different header. Let's add a random one we can recognize. And let's save this. Now you see, we can see it. And then I can go to my bearer and now we can call this API without exposing our API key on the front end. So most of the people right now would just add that in here, but now you're actually returning bearer s.xano.cool underscore cool, which you don't want. So you have to close the quote after you added a space at bearer, and then you have to add a plus and remove the quote at the end. So it looks like this. So we have the text bearer with a space as plain text, and then plus our uh, variable with that is the WIST secret. And it will say WIST secret Xano underscore cool, you know, because it is an environment variable in their uh, instance where they run this for you. So this is super cool. So now if I'm going to send this request, you see it will work. And actually, I should have got go back to Xano. <laughs> uh, Xano, why are you loading so long? Okay, wasn't a good idea to close Xano already, but here we go, we're back. So now when I run this request and we go to the request history, we see that in the response header right in here, we receive that it came from the waste server and we got a cookie and we got all some all kinds of data but we should see our uh, authorization token so wist passed on the authorization which is the one that i added in the wist secret now the cool thing is if i run this request again and inspect it on the front end in the network tab and let's run this request again using with secrets because the moment you add with secret, that request happens on the with server, not on the front end, on your user. So if I go in here, where does that happen? You see that this called uh, server.wist, this went to wist. And if I go to authorization, you will see bearer wist secret underscore xano underscore cool. So wist is masking that for you. So it, your API key will not be exposed on the front end. Now I have to say, be aware with 
you know, what you do with it because you're processing this on WIST's instance, right? They, they will know your API key. Of course, they're handling that with security, you know, but generally from a best practice approach, if you are sending social security numbers, please don't add the key for such valuable information uh, on the server, have it on your own instance, like even for compliance reasons. But you know, if you're not sending social security numbers, you're completely fine doing with secrets. Uh, I hope this helped you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support and see you tomorrow.